I'm going to talk about paying off your student loans. I'm going to show two ways to try to get rid of them faster. And one way at the end is sort of a little different. It's a little out there, but it does work and it can help you greatly. I'll go after the typical way. And then if you don't have additional money to throw at it, another way to help lower those interest payments and get you out of debt faster. But first off, when we talk about student loans, and the reason I put this together is that I was talking to someone who, of course, over the last couple of years had stopped paying their student loans because someone had said, hey, don't worry about it. There's sort of a moratorium on these loans. You don't have to pay them back. Then all of a sudden during this time period, the Fed raised rates, or they should say the overnight lending rate. And then, of course, rates have gone up all over the place. And they happen to have a variable rate, something you definitely want to stay away from, but they did. And what was their rate? It wasn't the 2 and 3% that was happening years ago. Theirs was actually 14%. Incredible, right? They hadn't been paying their loans because they were told they didn't have to. All of a sudden, they wake up. They got to start repaying their loans. They had a variable rates. Rates shot up, and they're paying 14% on a student loan. Unbelievable. Blew my mind. So first thing you want to do is prioritize your debts. Credit cards, personal loans, car loans. You may or may not have some of these. And then, of course, you want to look at your student loans. So credit cards at this point in time could be anywhere from, let's just say, 20 to 30%. Outrageous. Personal loans, they can vary greatly on a lot of factors. But let's just say, for sake of argument, that it's going to be somewhere between 12 and 18%. These are all relative to one another. Typically, credit cards are more than personal loans. It can depend a lot on your own financial situation as to what you get offered. Um, and then car loans, let's just say anywhere from 3 to 12%. You might have a new car loan. They might be offering a really good rate. You might have a used car loan, and they've gone up substantially. So you want to look at where does your student loan sit? Now, if you have a student loan, and you're looking at a student loan of 2%, and you have these other debts, well, you're probably going to want to work on your student loan last because you want to start tackling the highest percentage rates. This person has a 14% student loan. So it's going to fit kind of right in here. They didn't have personal loans. And let's just say, I don't believe they had credit cards. So their highest percentage issue was their student loan. So let's get into what to do next. Before we get into what to do next, I've got two videos I'll put in the description. One is how to use balance transfers to move to a 0% credit card. If you've got that high credit card debt, you wanna get rid of that first. A second one shows you how to use credit cards with Velocity Banking to get rid of that debt faster. But if you don't have that credit card debt and your highest one is your student loan, let's talk about what you can do with that. So let's talk about what you can do when you have that really high student loan rate. First off, obviously, if you can manipulate your budget and maybe spend a little less in certain categories and come up with a little extra money, that can help substantially. I wrote extra principal because in other videos, I show you where you, when you're adding additional money to your payment, it can drop it very fast in terms of paying it down faster and saving substantially on interest. And here's why. Just as an example, you may have a $200 monthly payment. Oftentimes, you will have at the front of the loan, the largest amount of the payment going to interest. Let's say it's $120 goes to interest. And let's just say 80 is going to your principal. So that means that your debt is only going down by $80. The next month, it might be something like 119 to interest and 81 to principal, then 118, and then 82. But as you can see, of the 200, only 80 goes to pay it down. Now, to show you what additional principal does, if you were to add another $100, that entire $100 goes to pay down your debt. It all goes to principal. There isn't an amount. So during at the uh, end of that month, when you make your payment, or whenever you make that payment, beginning of the month, doesn't really matter, you're going to make a $300 payment. Now, of course, you have the 120 is the interest. You've got 80 going to principal. But if you're out of that next 100 that you're putting in, it's all going to go to pay down your debt. And when you see some of the calculations coming up in a moment, you'll see how much faster that pays it down because I'm going to compare a couple methods. Now, another option is to simply try to refinance. 
So if you have one of these loans, variable rate loans, and they're 14 or 15%, whatever it may be, you might be able to go out and get a lower rate like an eight or a nine. That's, that's well and good. Um, sometimes if you're looking at maybe only a percentage difference, you know, do the math because there might be a fee to get the new loan and it may not even be worth it. The third way, ideally, you would be paying off not a 14% student loan, but a 0% student loan. Doesn't exist, but you can kind of create it. I'm going to show you how with a credit card trick. Now, when it comes to federal student loans and some others, you can't use a credit card to pay it off. Why would you? If you're paying 14%, why would you replace it with a credit card at 30%? Well, I'm going to put another link in the description to a video where I show you a list of cards, I believe it's six, maybe more, that have 0% on new purchases for 21 months, 18, 15, 12. Meaning, if you purchase something on your card today, you'll have 21 months to pay it off at 0%. If you do it a month from now, that offer will then be 20 months because it's a month later. But you get the idea. You can actually put money on a card and have 0%. It's not a balance transfer. It's on new purchases. That's something a lot of people don't realize. But if you can't use that credit card to pay the student loan, then what good is it? Well, now I'm going to walk you through how to do that. Okay. So what I'm showing here on the board is your student loan at 14% and you have $10,000 balance. That's what you owe. Then you've gotten one of these credit cards and it's a 21 month credit card at 0%. And then you have your checking or your debit account. And let's say after taxes, every month, you make a total of $4,000 and you pay your expenses. So normally what you do is you take your loan payment and you make your loan payment. Now, what you want to do is get this $10,000 off of the 14% and move it on to the zero. But you can't use your credit card to make a payment. So what do you do? Well, Let's say that out of this $4,000, $2,000 you use, you go to the grocery store, you use your debit card, it pulls it out of your checking. You go get gas, it pulls it out of your checking. You go eat out with friends, it pulls it out of your checking, whatever it may be. And all those expenses you can pay with a credit card, but you do it through your debit. Here's what you do. If it's $2,000, because for example, uh, your rent can't be paid with a credit card and that sort of thing. There is a credit card to allow you to do that. I have a video showing you, but it's fairly rare. So there are certain things that you're not going to use a credit card for because they might charge you an additional fee. But on things like gas and groceries and going out to eat, they don't charge you an additional fee to use your credit card. So if it's about $2,000, what you do is you take that $2,000 and you make a payment on your loan. Okay, so minus 2,000. Now you owe 8,000. Okay, great. You just took 2,000, made a loan payment. Now you can't eat, you can't do all those things. No, you can. You charge all of those things on this credit card. So they will not allow you to make a credit card payment on your loan. That's a no-no. So what you do is you take 2,000 that you normally use for your expenses, you make a payment, and now at the end of this month, your balance on 14% is 8,000. Your balance on 0% is 2,000. You've effectively, now we haven't paid down any debt, we're just talking about how to get it off of one and onto another. 8,000 at 14 and two at zero, when it used to be 10,000 and nothing. You do this for a couple months, every month that you do it, you charge another two grand and you move two grand again, and you end up with obviously 6,000 on this one and 4,000 total on this one. So what have you done? You've effectively just moved your loan onto your credit card, you just did it in a roundabout way because they won't let you do it directly. Just know that in life, no matter what hurdle a financial institution or whatever it may be will put up, there's always a way around it. 
So that's how to move it. Now, do you actually want to do that? You have to be careful because on these 0% cards, let's say it's a 21 month card, at the end of 21 months, it goes to 30%. That's not going to be very helpful. So you have to do it in a strategic manner. Let me explain. Okay, so I went ahead and put up the examples on the board. Now, this is the first of two. This is where you were able to find additional funds to increase your payment. The next example I'll show you is where you didn't and you have to keep making the same payment. All right, the scenario I was talking about was the individual, they've got 10,000 in student loan debt, it's at 14% and it's 10 years or 120 months. Okay, their payment is around $155. Part of that is going to principal, part of that is going to interest. Now, at the end of this time, if they just keep making that payment, they're going to end up paying a total of $18,000 and it would have taken them 120 months. Now, let's say that you were able to find additional money and you used the strategy I just showed you to move your loan onto a 0% card for 21 months. So you got to pay that off in 21 months to get the 0% the entire time because after that, the rate goes up. So you quickly just divide and say, okay, $10,000, 21 months, what's my payment going to have to be? It's going to have to be $476 a month. If you can swing that, then go ahead and move it to the 0% and pay it off. Now you're going to pay just $10,000 because there's no interest. So instead of 120 months or 10 years, it's only going to take you 21 months, which is less than two years. You're going to save over eight years. You're also going to pay 10,000 in total, not 18. You're going to save $8,000. So this should motivate you to do everything you can to lower your expenses and make a larger payment, get it onto the 0% card and make a larger payment. Now there's another option, which is a lot less work. The benefit isn't as great, but it's still really good. And that is you stick to this loan, but you make the higher payment. You figured out you can pay 476. Okay, so you go ahead and you make that payment on this loan. So for example, you're already making 155. You think you can make the 476. So you're just adding, essentially, you came up with another $321. You said, okay, I found another 321 that I can get out of my budget. I can stop doing this. I can stop doing that. I can sell my car, buy a cheaper one, whatever. I came up with another 321. So I take my 155, I add my 321, I can make this 476. If you can't get it onto a 0% card using the method I showed you, you can always just keep that loan and make a monthly payment of 476 because that additional amount of 321 is going right to principal. I ran it through a calculator. It's going to end up being a total paid of 11,600 and it's going to be 25 months. So if you just were to compare making a larger payment on the current loan, you went from $18,000 total paid to 11,600, substantial difference. And you went to 25 months instead of 10, 120 or 10 years. So it's about two years. Now, if you had gotten to the zero card, that is the optimal solution. There's zero interest, but we're only talking about, we're talking about $1,600. And that, that's significant. You want to save it, but there's really no work involved here in terms of trying to move it to a 0% card. But if you can get it on the 0% card, go ahead and do that. So I hope this shows you how imperative it is to get some extra money in your budget, however you can, stop this, stop that, and pay there to get it paid off faster. But what if you were able to find a little extra money, what can you do? Well, what you wanna make sure you do before you put something on the, one of those 0% credit cards is you determine how much extra can you come up with. So you've got that 155 payment. Let's say for sake of argument, you were able to come up with $100 a month, less coffee, commuting with a friend, carpooling, whatever, you got that extra $100. If you're paying for gas every month and you're commuting with someone else or maybe with three people, you might be able to come up with that pretty quick. So what would you do? Well, you've got a $10,000 balance and you're making that 155 payment. You can apply that 100 to this. We just showed that that will pay it down faster. You could also move, like I showed you earlier, 
onto a 0% card by moving the way in which you expense and pay for your expenses. If you were to do that, how much do you put on that 0% card? Well, you take the card and you say, if you got a 21 month at 0%, you're going to want to move 100 times, whoops, at 0%, okay? 21 months, you get rid of the 0%, that's confusing. So 100 times 21 is $2,100. Now, why don't you want to move more onto this card? Well, because you're only able to pay 100 a month for 21 months, and at the end of 21 months, it shoots back up to 20%, 25%, whatever it is. So you don't want to carry a balance past the 21 months. And then there's 18-month cards. There's 15. There's 12. It depends on which one you may have been approved for. Of course, in this case, times 18, you're going to move $1,800. You're going to move $1,500, or you're going to move $1,200 because you're just multiplying the additional money you're able to make by the month term. This, now, if you were to able to move that 2100, let's say, for example, a 21 month, then this balance, since you've moved it, is now going to be uh, 7,900, right? So now you've got 7,900 on that loan, not 10,000, and you've got 2100 over here at 0%, and you've got your 7,900 at 14%. That will help you pay it down much faster, even if it's only $50 and you cut that in half and you make it 1,050. So those are the various strategies you can use. I wanted to point out, first you prioritize and determine, is this the first loan I wanna pay off? If it has the highest percentage rate, it is. Secondly, look what a difference it makes if you can increase the amount of money that you add to your principal payments. Thirdly, you can use the method to move on to a 0% card just make sure you know how much you're paying every month. And then you just do the math to know how much you want to move. Maybe you can move the entire thing like we showed you and end up paying no interest over time. Or maybe you can just help reduce it by finding a little extra money every month. I hope this helps. And I hope you get rid of that student debt, the credit card debt, whatever it is, your highest rate debt. Get rid of that first and get out of debt as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.